What's up, everybody? Bradley with the Insurance Guys Podcast here. Before we get started with this episode, I want to talk to you about this week's sponsor. If you pay any attention to the Independent Agency channel, you know there's no hotter buzzword right now than VAs or virtual assistants. This week's sponsor, I'm proud to say, is CoverDesk, who offers an innovative client solution for agencies to outsource client-facing VAs. Created by agency veteran Andy Priesman, owner of Greenway Insurance. People, this is not your typical VA company. They offer a proven system of recruiting highly educated virtual assistants, ensuring consistent performance for your agency. With their experience, they're able to help you design a program that is just right for you and your agency. They implement by onboarding and training each VA in foundational insurance skills. Visit CoverDesk on the web at www.coverdesk.com or email them at hello at coverdesk.com or you can call them and tell them that the insurance guys sent you. Please do at 512-879-3345. Guys, give CoverDesk a ring. I promise you, you will not regret it. Insurance agents from around the world, welcome to the Insurance Guys podcast, hosted by yours truly, Scott Howell, and the incomparable Bradley Flowers. For agents, by agents, we're here to share real-life experiences, tips, and insights related to all aspects of both being an insurance agent and running a successful agency. So sit back, turn up the volume, and let's get down to business. Insurance agents from around the world, welcome to the Insurance Guys podcast. My name is Scott Howell, your fearless leader and host, agency owner and insurance evangelist for iProtect Insurance and Financial Services based in Huntsville, Alabama. And before we get started on today's episode, please help me welcome, he is a six foot three sophomore from Sarah Land, Alabama. Parade All-American, Rivals, five-star recruit. Ladies and gentlemen, he is a fantastic insurance agent and a great American. Please stand and put your hands together for the incomparable Mr. Bradley Flowers. How are you, Bradley? I'm great, Scott. How are you today? Man, I'm doing fan super tabulous. We have, uh, guys, let's just pull the curtain back for you a minute. We have been batching our podcast now for two days. We did eight episodes yesterday. We're going to do five or six episodes today. We have just gotten off a mind-blowing podcast with Mr. Jeff Roy and Seth Zaremba. Can't wait for you guys to hear that one. I guess, I don't know if it'll come out before this one or not. We it will. That'll be episode 60. So yeah, everybody. We move, sometimes we move podcasts around and put some because of certain things we put before others. But great episode. Hope you guys take a listen to it. Today, I have got a very special guest on. He's a friend of, a friend of mine. We've actually done a little bit of business together, and he's somebody that I love not only for his personality and who he is and how hard he works, but I love him because he's so passionate about the insurance industry. He's one of those guys that he eats it, breathes it, loves it, spends a lot of time in it. It is his life. It is his passion. Ladies and gentlemen, we have today with us, he is the flood insurance guru. He is the, uh, oh yeah, and by the way, he was on episode 29 of the Insurance Guys podcast. One you need to listen to. He, he studied at Jacksonville State University. He lives in Covington, Georgia, and he is married to the beautiful Stephanie Green. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the show, my friend and great American, the other incomparable, Mr. Chris Green. How are you, Chris? I'm good, thank you. Man, you're welcome, anytime. Today, we're going to be talking about something that seems to be a recurring theme on the Insurance Guys podcast. You know, for two days, we've been podcasting, and the word automation has probably mm-hmm. come up 10 times in the last two days. We, Chris, we did a call-in show this morning, and one of the recurring themes I heard on that is, you know, I want to do more business. I want to get into this. I want to get into that. How can I do that without hiring a bunch of folks? And we talked a little bit this morning about creating that 100% digital agency, and then we talked a little bit about- Or at least trying to achieve that. Right, getting to that. And then uh, we talked about automation. We talked a little bit about automation this morning. I know what the, that's what this podcast is going to be about. Guys, all the insurance agents that are listening to this right now, you know, our mission on this podcast is to help you guys in any way we can. And I think one of the ways we can do that is to talk a little bit with Chris because he is a subject matter expert on automation. He is going to, and Chris, why don't you tell our audience 
audience, instead of me blabbling on about it, about what you're going to be doing at Elevate this year. Yeah, we're going to be doing a uh, breakout session on automation. The big thing what we're doing is, you know, we're not building out these fancy automations. The big struggle is people want something they can put in place right now. But so many people see a system with bells and whistles say, hey, that's awesome. But what they don't realize is most of the time it's their process that's broken. Mm. So figure out the process, then go find a system that matches that process the best of the ability. Uh, I couldn't agree more. And Chris is an active practitioner in the subject of automation. Too. So Yeah, so tell our audience kind of some of the things that you've done in terms of automation that maybe they could mirror and, and put in place in their agencies that might help them on a day-to-day basis. All right, I'll tell you this. I started studying automation probably three years ago, and I've probably wasted more money on systems and more time than anybody out there. People even joke with me about it. I would guess that. But through that process, I've learned so much that, hey, maybe I can help some people save some time, some money. But what I realized is like, you know, because I'm going through all this, and I'm looking at what to automate. Everyone's like, automate this, automate that. And when we started talking, we're like, wait a minute, you're automating yourself out of your business. Mm. You should be automating two things, things that take your time away from your family and things that take your time away from your customers. Mm. Nothing else should be automated. I love that. And so as I was going through that, everyone's like, automation, robotic, robotic. I said, no. I use automation to create such an incredible experience that our customers become cheerleaders and go and do our marketing for us. Mm. You know, one of the things that it was like, you know, oh, I want to have this awesome welcome campaign. You know, I want to bring was that a customer welcome support. campaign. A welcome, yeah. welcome campaign. Onboarding renewal. I said, look, just start with something. You don't have to have the best thing in the world out there. And I always say, a bad plan in place is better than a great plan in your head. Well, when I went through this process, I realized our onboarding process sucks and our renewal process sucks, and it's costing us referral partners. Mm-hmm. And I said, not to mention, it's creating a bad experience for employees. So I started writing out every single process. And to this day, I still do that. And I realized, hey, I can remove three things. I can add three things. Well, one of the things was like, you know, we're making it hard for people to do business with us. Mm -hmm. So what I did about two years ago, I created links, not just for referral partners, but for our customers. We wanted to treat every single customer the same way we treat one of our loan officers. You know, we wanted to make it so easy for them to send us business, but we also wanted to kind of reward them. You know, a customer sends us a uh, referral. We send them a card in the mail with maybe brownies or a $10 gift card. The problem is that stuff can be time consuming. Mm-hmm. So what I did is I created a uh, system that basically automates that. So we have probably 900 different referral links between lenders, realtors, customers. And people go oh, because we come in the office and we have five or 10 leads sitting on our desk because of the different links, because uh, we make it so easy for people to do business with us. We just had a girl that came on board with us about two weeks ago. She said, the other company I was with, I was cold calling. I generated three leads in a month because I generate five leads in a month using these links because we make it so easy for customers to deal with us. And they don't feel like we're selling them insurance because they're just filling out this link. And we're continuing to educate them through videos and all this other stuff. Hey, Chris, let's stop right there for just a second because – You know, I represent 250,000 insurance agents that are listening to this podcast right now, and I'm constantly thinking to myself while a guest is talking, do they understand what in the hell he's talking about or she's talking about right now? And I don't understand what you mean by the word links. What do you mean by that? Uh, A website, a web form. Okay. Uh, They're super easy to build. There's a lot of cool tools out there for them. But you just want to make it really easy for people to give you their information. How are you using the web form, though? Because what I'll do is I'll create a web form, which will take time. And then the web form from that will give me information that takes me more time to fill out. So how is that automating? How does that that work? Well, we have all these links stored. And so what happens is if it's a lender, he has that designated link that's just for him that we build out for him. And when somebody submits it, we redirect them, not to leave us a review, but to leave the customer review. Just like when you visit a website and you know you go to a thank you page, Mm -hmm. instead of taking them to a thank you page, we're just taking them to leave that lender review. And depending on what automation system you use, we're just putting something behind it where it sends that customer a thank you card in the mail from that lender with all their information on there. Mm. So the lender uses that link that you've created for them. Yep. And they go in and they can leave a review of your agency. Is that right? No, we have it where that customer is leaving that lender a review for them. Oh, the I goal see. It's focusing on helping that lender grow their business. I'm writing all this down. That's why I'm not talking right now. 
So, so the, like when they get a thank you card, it has none of our information on there. What we've done is we've gone into a service called Zendirect or any kind of fulfillment company, like send out cards. Mm-hmm. And we've created a card that has all that lender's information on it. All the card says, look, I know we're not to the finish line yet, but we just appreciate you so much for letting us be a part of this important process. Mm-hmm. And really what you're doing by doing that, and guys, if you've listened to some of our podcasts, this was one of my big problems with some of the things we did here in 2018. Again, I'm, I am brutally honest about myself and about this podcast and mistakes we've made and things we've done well. We had three different referral partner podcast in 2018, all kind of talking about kind of the same thing, you know, how to build referral partners. But I felt like, and I called Bradley one day after I listened to one of them, and I was so upset with myself, not with Bradley, but with myself, because I felt like we had given some general information on how we do things, you know, how they need to build referral partners, but we didn't really get into the meat and potatoes of some of the strategies to implement to do that. So what you've done, Chris, is you've just provided me with one of those strategies that I wanted to get back to. And I think it's something Bradley's kind of started doing as well in some in certain certain areas. But what you've done is you've created that link, not for yourself, not for your agency, but for your customer, who is the mortgage broker or real estate agent, whoever it may be. And you've kind of helped them created some value for them in a way that they didn't have prior to that. Is that right? That is right. But I'll tell you actually where the link performs the best is the one that we've developed for other insurance agents on our flood side, Mm -hmm. because it'll say flood insurance guru at the bottom, but then it has all that other insurance agents info on there. And then we redirect that customer to leave that insurance agent a review, Mm -hmm. send a thank you card from that insurance agent. And so what happens is when you start doing that, people want to do business with you all day long because you're out there being a positive promoter for them and it's not costing them a dime. Right. But in that particular case, again, that's not, that's not directly your agency. That other insurance agent is kind of your customer too, correct? I mean, yes, correct. And so, and so you're kind of doing the same thing there. You're providing a link for that particular insurance agent and you're creating value for them, which in turn gets you more business because they're like, man, I, this, this guy's a shit. I need to use him again. Yeah. Not only that, but like I always say, if it's not trackable, it's not measurable. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the month, you can go back and look at these links. Say, All right, five of these were submitted this month, 10 this mm-hmm. month. Hey, mm-hmm. you know, your business has really slowed down the last couple of months. What's mm-hmm. going on? Now you know where to spend your marketing money and your time. Right. And what, what do you use? Again, I'm trying to drill down for these guys because you give if you give general information out, there's still that missing component of taking it from listening to an idea, which is what we just talked about, to actually implementing that idea. So if these insurance agents listening to this wanted to start creating links for their business partners, which is kind of what we're talking about, what, where would they even start or go to do that? What website or where, where would they go? I mean, you could go to any web form service, but where I started was active campaign, Mm -hmm. which was a pretty cheap CRM. And honestly, I probably should have stayed there. I would have wasted so much time and money and all those other systems through the years. Is that active active campaign.com? Yes. Okay. And it's the cheapest one out there. It's very easy to get started. They do like a 14 day trial. I mean, they make things so simple. Now, I've gone in a different direction. I'm currently using HubSpot. But mm-hmm. The reason for that is now I've created a whole nother ticketing system through automation where I mean, I've just gone to a whole nother level with it. But it just does a better job reporting. But Active Campaign is a great place to start because it's cheap. It's pretty simple. And as I said, it helps you get a plan in place. It may not be the perfect plan, mm-hmm. but it, the least the ball is moving. Exactly. And so if they go to activecampaign.com and they create one of these web links for, for their business partners and, and customers, you said on the back end of that, you know, in addition to the link, like when somebody fills out the referral, or, I mean, excuse me, the testimonial or, or referral or whatever it may be, a card gets sent out. Does that get done by active campaign or is there another bolt on that you're using to do that? I use another bolt-on through a uh, kind of integration tool called Zapier. And I used to use Send Out Cards because they had an open API, but they don't anymore. I mm-hmm. use Zendirect, which is all it is, is a fulfillment company. They'll send out cards. They'll send out gift cards. I mean, heck, when someone buys a home insurance policy, we automatically have a picture frame that goes out to the customer with a, le- a card in the middle that says, Welcome to our family. We just want you to remember the moment mm-hmm. that you joined it. And you said that's that's you're doing that through Zap- Zendirect. Zendirect? Yeah. yeah. 
Z e n d i r e c t dot com. Zapier just kind of connects all your different tools. Okay. And okay. if you're an independent agency, I will tell you there's a great resource out there called Automation for the Independent Agency. It's a Facebook group. It's only for independent agents, mm-hmm. but it said you know a lot of those people out there are that, and it's a great resource to ask those questions. Right. And get access to that kind of stuff of, you know, where you're not going to waste your money or, hey, how do I do this? Mm -hmm. People Mm -hmm. throw up screen shares all the time. Hey, here's a quick way to do this. Mm -hmm. And when you create the link, I want to make sure I understand this. And you said this earlier, but I just I just want to make sure I'm crystal clear about this. The link that you're sending to your customers for your customers that they can send to their clients, are you wanting them to send it out to their clients to be able to get a testimonial or to get a referral? Or I use it for referrals. You can use it for test. That's a different kind that I build, but I mainly use it for referrals where the lender can submit it for the customer. The customer can submit it mm-hmm. uh, because I automatically have an email going back out to the lender. Mm-hmm. And when it's submitted, I have an email going out to the customer as well. Just tell them, hey, we got your information from you know John Smith at Wells Fargo. You've made a great choice to work with him for your mortgage needs. Mm-hmm. He's asked us to review your home insurance for you. And we're going to be in touch with you very shortly. In the meantime, here's a quick educational video on how to understand home insurance. I love that so much. Is that link that you've created, is that link coming from you or is it coming from them? From, from the, like the lender? It's a link I've created and uh, to send it to the lender and they just save it as a, uh, a favorite on their browser. And then they can send that out to the potential customer. They can send it to the customer. They can fill it out themselves. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Got you. They can do it on their phone. Man, that's that's awesome, dude. That's called creating value right there instead of just dropping some damn cookies off over at the mortgage lender's place, you know, or the real estate agent's office. Well, that's a whole different uh, automation we have going with that. Tell us about that. I want to hear that. Whenever I meet a new realtor or lender, I've been doing the last two years, um, they get a card in the mail because it takes about a week to go out. And it says, hey, it was great meeting you last night at the chamber. I mean, last week at the chamber event. Here's some brownie points for doing some after hours networking that others aren't. And mm-hmm. it's just a card and a pack of brownies. And I usually pick up the phone, call me, say, man, those brownies were awesome. Hey, since I've got you on the phone, can you take a look at this for me? And who, who do you do that through? Same. Zen is is direct as well. Okay. Okay. You know, it might cost me seven or eight dollars, but it's the best money I ever spent. I spent eight hundred dollars on cheesecakes about eight months ago when all these storms through came through Coleman, Alabama, and mm-hmm. pretty much destroyed all these houses. We sent out sympathy cards to the customer. And said, "Look, we know you're having a bad day and you're going through a really hard time. We just want you to know that we're here for you. If you have questions? If you need any assistance?" Hopefully this cheesecake makes your day a little bit better. Wow. And they actually get cheesecake or are they getting yes. like a gift card for cheesecake? No, no, no. They're actually getting a cheesecake to sit to them on dry ice. That's amazing. So so let's talk a little bit about, as it relates to what we're talking about right now, are all of these automation processes that we just discussed as far as sending, sending this stuff out, is it all being done through email? No, I do a lot. I do some through email. I do some through text. But most when the link goes out, it goes by email. Okay. You know, let's just say that the email is not opened within 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. For example, when I send a customer a quote, I have links built for them. If they don't fill it out within 30 minutes, they'll get a text. Hey, just in case you didn't get the email, here's the link for the home quote. Just click below. As soon as we get your information, we'll start working on everything for you. Mm-hmm. You know, it we're could in- be Facebook Messenger, uh, direct mail. Now, we're, we're in the texting revolution right now. Everybody's still texting a lot. I just got through having two or three podcasts about this. but Then you should check out Pick Snippets. <laughs> Pick, P-I-C-K? It's just P-I-C-S-N-I-P-P-E-T-S. I use it to, when, when we take a customer on board, it's just a picture of me holding a dry erase board, mm-hmm. and then their name shows up on the dry erase board. It says, hey, welcome to the Community First Agency, Jason Smith. Picksnippets.com. Yep. S on the end of it. You use it with it. all these different kinds of systems, but it's awesome. Mm-hmm. It charges me like 20 bucks a month for unlimited snippets. Just another way to make things personal. Right. It's the same reason why I get like mortgage information when we do a policy in our automation system. Mm-hmm. Because nine months after we issue the policy, we send them an email. Say, hey, John Smith, just want to let you know that your traveler's home insurance policy is coming up for renewal in a couple months. And we want to make sure you still have your mortgage with Wells Fargo, loan number one, two, three, four, five. Mm-hmm. If it's not correct, please click the link below to let us know the correct information. Mm-hmm. And we're not chase- spending two months chasing down the wrong mortgage company. Right. But that's all merged. So, you know, if we don't get the right information on the front end, then we can't create a great experience for the customer on the back end. So it's only good as the person putting it in. And so are there any other automation programs that you're using for that new customer that maybe you've just gotten on board in the last, you know, month, two, six, 
year? Well, I use video in a lot of my automation. So when a customer comes on board with us, they actually get 12 months of video through text, email, maybe uh, Facebook Messenger, really depending on how they want to communicate, because that's something else we do. We kind of send them a survey. Hey, what's the best way to communicate with you Mm -hmm. so that we know we're communicating with the right way? It's just that it's home insurance. So that might be, you know, understanding the discounts on a home insurance. I just shot a video a couple months ago with my daughter's stuffed dog talking about animal animal liability, the impact on your home insurance. And so they're getting different videos like that. Whatever comes across our desk every week, we turn around and I put it in a video series, and that's what our customers are getting every month. Are you cre- are you creating the video or are you are you outsourcing that? No, I'm creating every single one of the videos myself. Okay. I just shot one yesterday with my daughter's playhouse, which looks like brick. Mm-hmm. Put a piece of wood on there. Talked about the difference between earthquake and tornado resistant homes, mm-hmm. and understand each coverage on your home insurance. You know, getting back to and that's that's fantastic. It makes me feel very inadequate to listen to you. By the way, because I'm not doing any of that right now, and, and I, but I don't think I'm in the minority. I think a lot of people listening to this right now are probably feeling the same way I am, and they're they just like, get overwhelmed and nothing shit, gets done. Man. Unfortunately, yeah, exactly. In terms of creating content. For your existing clients and your new members, I don't know if there's anything more important. I think I ran it on that this morning in an earlier podcast. What other automation tools that you can think of just off the top of your head while we're talking right now are you using in your agency on a day-to-day basis to, I guess, help with workflow and, and not getting bogged down with the service stuff? Well, three weeks ago... I decided to do a trial run with a ticketing system, and I wish I would have invested in it two years ago. It was the best investment I ever made. You said a ticket, um, a ticketing system? Yeah. So basically what I did is we have a management system. Each one of our users has their own email address. Well, I changed that all to one email address. I went to every single one of our insurance carriers, changed the email address, changed it on our websites. Mm-hmm. And what happens now, when an application is complete, if it's missing something, everything is coming into that email address. And I have that email address going into a service hub that I have access to. Our two CSRs have access to. Mm-hmm. So instead of them waiting on me to get in my email and respond, our CSRs are able to respond instantly. Mm-hmm. I'm able to respond instantly if our CSRs are slammed. And so what it does is things get taken care of much quicker, much mm-hmm. more efficiently. But more importantly, it's creating an awesome experience for our customer. Let's just say they call in for a policy change. We get it complete. As soon as that ticket's closed, they get an email with a video saying, hey, just want to let you know. We got your vehicle change taken care of. You know, be looking out for your ID cards. If they don't open that email within 30 minutes, they get a text that says the same thing. And you said you created that through a ticketing system. Who who did yeah. you use for that? Well, I'm using HubSpot because they built it in there, but you can use Freshdesk, Zendesk, Help Scout. There's all kinds of systems out there. You know, I hope the damn 250,000 insurance agents around the world are, are taking some damn notes right now. That's all I can say. I don't know that I've been on a podcast that's provided this much incredible content relative to automation. We had a conversation yesterday with somebody about what we're seeing a lot of right now. And I think it's part of that paradigm shift in the insurance industry where, you know, a lot of agents are finding that instead of building the brick and mortar agency with 10 staff members and $800,000 $800,000 a year in payroll, they're, they're going to more of that digital agency transformation. And I think a lot of what you're doing and incorporating can help people in that in that regard in terms of cutting down on the number of staff members that you have to have and, and really drilling down to, to creating that digital experience. And I'll tell you someone who's really helped me a lot with it is uh, Nicholas Ayers. Yeah, Nick, man, I, I tell you what, about every other podcast, somebody brings up Nicholas Ayers. Uh, especially when it comes to the digital part. When it comes to video, the man's a genius. Yeah. Uh, areas like career agent concepts, insurance mm-hmm. soup, mm-hmm. have helped us a ton as well. Yeah, right. That's Michael McCormick and Taylor Dobby. Yes. Yeah, Nicholas Ayers is, if you, guys, if you want to get in touch with him or you want to learn more about Nicholas Ayers, and I think he's he's either on the podcast today. I know we've reached out to him, and he's agreed to be on the podcast, but we, I don't know if we've got him scheduled today or not. But, guys, if you just go to Facebook and type in in the search bar Nicholas Ayers, A-Y-E-R-S, he, he has got tons of content on Facebook. And help me out with this, Chris, but I believe Nick has got a uh, – does he go by Nick or Nicholas? He goes by Nicholas, but he's got a free – not really a course, but it's a free group out there called Made You Look Video. You're right. Um, it's really – I mean, I'm in also a paid version, but the free one is really great for people just kind of wanting feedback on video. They're not sure what to do. Right. You know, just pick up the camera and start recording. 
Yeah, he. I knew. I knew he had some content that was free, and then I thought he had some content that was more pay. You know, you have to pay to be a part of a part of the group type thing. Is that right? Am yeah, I correct? That is that? right. Yeah. Okay. And then, of course, Taylor Dobby and Michael McCormick, guys. If you want to know how to create Facebook ads and use Facebook ads and in, in your agency to create more prospects that are you know hot hot leads that are looking for insurance right now, those guys have spent the better part of their career dialing that in and really, really understanding how to do that. Am I correct about that? Yes. That CAC, everybody I know that does that just raves about it. I think Bradley's a member of that as well. So tell me some other things. I want to hear some agency automation stuff. Do you have anything automated for billing? or? Uh, yeah, I have non-pay and all that. But like, it's healthy. I said, look, that's not kind of fancy system that I'm using. All the systems do itself. Right. The key is writing out those processes. Yeah. You know, for example, a customer calls in. You know, what happens? They're like, oh, we get their information. Well, great. What information are you getting? How are you writing it down? What happens after you get that information? Mm-hmm. I said, I'm telling you, you're leaving out 10 steps because you're not writing it out because you have no idea. Right. And you're creating a terrible customer experience. Mm-hmm. And that's where that whole customer experience versus customer service comes into play. Right. Right. And tell our audience what the difference is. They've heard us say it about 10 times. Maybe you Proactive can... versus reactive. Right, right. You know, I've always said if you create an incredible customer experience, then you're not going to need that much customer service mm-hmm. because you're not having to be reactive. 100% agree with that. What's nonpay.com? Tell me about that. Nonpay? I don't know. Oh, I thought you said you use non-pay. No, no, I said I do have some stuff like non-pay. So I set up a long time ago because I was, you know, when I was in the non-standard business, uh-huh. I used an app called Harvest App. And my brother helped show it to me. It was kind of a time tracker, but it helped me realize how much time I was wasting on non-standard business. And so, you know, I was like, you know what? Half of what I'm spending my time on is on these bills. So, you know, they would get an email. They get a text. They get a phone call. A lot of agents say, I'm not doing any of that because I'm scared to death of an E&O claim. And unfortunately, everybody thinks, oh, I'm not going to call anybody because of an E&O claim. And the way I look at it, like, you know, the heck with the whole E&O claim. I'm going to do what's right for the customer. Mm-hmm. I've never had an E&O claim because we make sure we document every single thing. But there's so much hey, If I call one, I got to call them all. Well, call them all. Mm-hmm. You know, send a little text, whatever. But do what's best for the customer. Don't worry about the E&O all day long. That's why we have it. Hopefully right. you never have a claim. Right. Tell me. But uh, if you do the right things, you never will. Tell me this, man. You've mentioned twice at the beginning of this podcast and about two minutes ago, you mentioned writing out processes and how important that is. Yep. I got two questions here kind of go in line with the same thing, but do you write the processes yourself or do you have agency team members helping you do that? Well, I write them out myself, but then I get our CSR's input because on the service side, they're doing a lot of the work. I want to know how their experience is. Not only do I want to create a great experience for our customers, I want to create a great experience for our employees. It's the same reason why I pay a lot more for HubSpot Mm -hmm. instead of maybe having seven or eight different products and it being a little cheaper. I want to make things as easy as possible for them. So I take them from, you know, eight steps to maybe two steps. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you write out these processes and then review them with your CSRs and your agents, Agency. In terms of how you're doing that and what you're doing, are you writing a process for every single thing in your agency? And let me give you an example, like creating this system to automate rewards for referral partners that we just talked about at the beginning of the podcast. Is that process actually written out? Yes, it is. Because okay. if you can't write it out, here's the thing. Everybody spends all this time trying to implement stuff in automation. Guess what? You can put stuff in automation in about three minutes if you write it out because that's the hard part. Right. You know, so, I wrote so, out a new so, onboarding process the other day. So do you write out minutes. do you write out a process even as do you go as far as writing out a process for quoting? Like how to quote? Yes. Like what okay. happens when we quote? For example, it goes to quote request. Once the mm-hmm. quote request comes in, and then if we have a VA that's doing it, it's moved over the quote ready. When it's moved over the quote quote ready, the rep gets a hold of it. We make mm-hmm. a video. Mm-hmm. It's send the quote sent when the customer reviews it, it sends the quote received. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we gotta know how we want that whole process to go before we can put it in place. Right. Or nothing's going to happen or the wrong thing's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And then also you have a process I'm sure that you've written out that after that quote goes to bind and the policy's been sold, now you're writing a separate process on the the new member or new client follow-up as well. It is. You know, we had a nightmare of onboarding. We had some carriers that require some things that we learned the hard way. Mm-hmm. We had, uh, cancellations. We lost some referral partners because of it. Mm-hmm. So now... Just like someone has a deal pipeline for new business, we have a separate deal pipeline for onboarding, a right. separate deal pipeline for non-renewal, renewal. I want to know where that customer is at at all times. Let me speak on behalf of the 250,000 
insurance agents around the world and say this, okay? And I'm speaking to you from them. I'm channeling them from me to you, okay? So I've listened to what you have to say, and it's it's odd that we're having this conversation because about two months ago, we, we, we had no written processes in my agency, none. Now, let me say this, not an excuse, okay? I'm not trying to make excuses, but all of my employees that I have, I have five employees total, and they've all been with me for, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight years. Long time, long time. Most of them have been doing this a long time, 10, 15 years, some seven years. But we had never taken the time to write out the processes. And as one of the 250,000 insurance agents around the world right now, if I'm one of them and I'm listening to you talk right now, the first thing that goes through my head is I don't have the time to sit down and write down the literally hundreds of processes that you need to write down in your agency. So how have you been able to write out all of these processes without it just consuming all of your time? Billy Williams. Billy Williams. Uh, Billy Williams has a course. You know, I was that way six, 12 months ago. When I started going through Billy Williams course, it really showed me, man, we need to write every single thing out. When we started doing that, yeah, it was a little hard for our CSRs at first and people working with us, but they realized, you know, we're making it a whole lot easier. We are determining the outcome. Everything is controllable. You put somebody in place to say, if, as long as the same process is followed, you're going to have the same outcome, mm-hmm. but you got to have the right process. And Billy Williams is massive on that stuff. And who is Billy? I mean, has, who is Billy Williams? Uh, Billy Williams. I think he was an Austin agent for a long time. Now he's a, a business coach, specializes in insurance. Mm-hmm. Um, has his own insurance courses that he charges for. That he mm-hmm. teaches these. Um, mm-hmm. I know with Jason Cass, he just had a big workshop called Twenty Three Most Important Processes for an Insurance Agency." For example, he sells most of his life insurance during the claims process. Mm-hmm. When he, you know, he owns a bunch of agencies, but he's like, you know. You know, people are thinking about that. It's part of the process, but you got to have the right process. Did you hire Billy to come in and act as a coach for you, or did you just no, follow him? No, he his... has like a paid course I was in for a little bit of stuff. Okay. And he's the, he's the one that kind of taught you the importance of writing down all your processes. Yes. And then does he actually show you through that course how to do that as well? Yes. None of that. He shows you how to implement it. I mean, he takes you step by step. Hard, but, ha- hard I mean, of a, hard wonderful of a teacher. for agency owners. Yeah. Let me ask you another question. Do you feel like Billy would be a great guy to have on this podcast? Uh, absolutely crucial, especially as people who are just not getting in it. Hey, don't create the bad habit. Mm-hmm. If you're getting in, let's go ahead and do it right the first time. Trust right. me. Right. So, guys, this process that we're talking about right now and writing down all of your processes in your agency, hell, even writing down, you know, like new hire first day, you know, what we need to show somebody when they first walk in the office for the first time, writing down all of these processes, I continue to hear over and over and over and over again, how important that is. And that's what Chris is saying right now is that's right, that you've got to do that. Am I correct on that? That is absolutely correct. Because here's the cool thing: you could even take your new hire process and put it in automation. That's what we've done. And make videos and stuff to, to yeah, show the like new hire. We use uh, video tracking, so they might be doing a quoting video. And what happens is when they see that quoting video, they can't go on to the next video until they finished it. Right. It's almost like a Cardone University. You ever seen that before? Where you you get on there and he's got the different episodes that have the different topics. But can- the employees love it mm-hmm. because they're like, look, I'm not blowing up your phone asking you 10 questions. Right. I can go back to the video and rewatch it. Right. And it's more efficient for both of us. Right, 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 right. And it is it is time consuming. So I asked you earlier, I said, how did you find the time to do this? And your answer was Billy Williams. But uh, I guess going back to that question again, in the course of learning from Billy, is this something that you just mark time out for like an hour or two a day to do one or two? No, it's just like my automation. I take probably an hour a day. Uh-huh. I don't write out these huge automation, these huge processes. I just write out the first two or three steps. Right. Because guess what? That's two or three more steps than I had the day before. Exactly. And I treat it like a Dave Ramsey snowball plan. Mm-hmm. I look down two months later, and I've got this awesome process built out now. Mm-hmm. But the process was already in place after step one or two mm-hmm. and let it keep going in place and just building on it. I don't mm-hmm. have to have the whole thing in play for it to start. Yeah, it's the old saying, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Yeah. That kind of thing. It's the same thing you should do in the insurance, you know? Right. How do you sell $100,000 premium? 
A thousand dollars at a time. Absolutely. A dollar at a time. Just take just takes time, baby. It just takes time. Yeah. But what happens is people get so overwhelmed because they see all these things, they get distracted and right. they get lost. Right. So, Chris, I want to ask you one last question. In terms of your daily routine, I like to ask people like you this question because you're so passionate about the industry. I mean, you're like the Navy SEAL of the insurance industry in terms of you've immersed yourself in insurance. It's your life. It's what you do every day. It's a, it's a lot of who you are as a person. But from a daily routine standpoint, tell our audience, like, what time do you get up? If you could put a percentage on it, how much time a day are you spending in insurance and how much time a day are you spending on other things? Well, I'm spending more time on other things now because it's taking me this long to figure out as an agency owner, I can't go anywhere right. without my team. So I'm slowly shifting everything over to them where mm. in 2019, all my time really be spent on flood marketing and automation. Yeah. And then they'll be handling everything else. Right. But now my daily routine now is you spend, you know, I get up, take my daughter to school because I work until sometimes one, two o'clock in the morning for the West Coast stuff. Wow. I spend about 30 minutes to an hour a day making video and whatever's come up that day. And then I spend an hour doing automation. I'll probably spend two hours a day talking to other insurance agents, not helping them with things, but just kind of brainstorming Mm -hmm. to see how I can help grow and they can help me grow. I I do talk to a lot of them with automation, but that's how we generate a lot of our flood business Mm -hmm. (laughs) and just really helping each other grow. Because like I tell people, it's like, look, we get there a lot faster together than we do against each other. Absolutely. And so that's kind of my day. And I do spend two hours. I, I cut off about two hours a day. And all I work on is flood quoting. You know, you do about as good a job as anybody I've ever met. And I need to do a better job of this as well. But getting with people in the industry that can help you and hopefully you can help them to come up with new and better ways of doing things. I think you do a great job of that, whether it's Bradley or Nick or Michael McCormick or, you know, whoever it may be in the industry. I think you do as good a job as anybody of I've got a problem here or I see something I can improve on. Let me call this person that I feel like's an expert in that, and let's have that conversation. Yes, and then I try and, to. and here here's the big key to the whole thing. You can call as many some bitches as you want to, but the great thing that you do is after you talk to one of these people and you figure out what you want to do, you immediately turn back around and you go implement that. Yeah, I think you kind of take a look like as a head coach. You know, yeah, somebody becomes a head coach for the first time. They worked under different six different head coaches, and the best advice they probably got is, look, stay true to yourself, but take a little bit piece of each one of those people right. and create yourself. Right, right. It's worked well for you. Tell our audience how much you've grown in 2018 because I know you have. If you're working to 1 o'clock in the morning, I don't I don't have a doubt that you've grown well, this year. You know, it's kind of weird this year. We really haven't grown that much because that's because I've made such a huge investment this year on the flood side. Right. And really shifted my business that way. You know, we've had our normal growth this year of about 10%. But the big thing this year is what we've done with our internal processes uh-huh. to continue that growth years in the future. Right. Uh, but when we've become one of the fastest growing flood insurance agencies in the country, not because of the amount of premium that we're writing. I think, I think it's because of the education we're showing other agents, as they call us. Mm. They're like, you're not even doing any business. You're showing me how to keep it in my pocket. But because of that, you know, they keep sending us our other flood stuff. And that's kind of how we've grown this year. Let me do it. Like I tell people, I'm a terrible salesperson. I'm just really good at product placement and educating people. Man, I tell you what, you mean a lot to this podcast. You've always, from the beginning, you've always been a big supporter of ours. And I really, really, really appreciate mm-hmm. that. And I, I agree with that. Bradley does as well. I'm going to go ahead and close this thing out. Guys, if you didn't get anything from this podcast, I don't know what the hell to tell you to do, man. I really don't. I don't I, this is probably one of the most informative. We've had three or four podcasts today that we've done that I just, when I hung up the phone or we got off the podcast with a guy like Chris, I would just look at Bradley and say, I don't know what to tell anybody to do if they didn't get anything out of that. This is one of those podcasts. Now, is it as sexy as talking about Atlanta Falcons football or, you know, who's going to win the, the national championship or something like that? No, it's not. But if you're an insurance agent and you're looking to grow your business and to do things the right way or to change your business and go back in the direction of doing things the right way, I just think podcasts like this are just invaluable. I really do. And I really appreciate you being on today, brother. All right. Thank you. Yeah. I think he's crying. I uh, know he's not crying. He wouldn't do that. I'm going to go ahead and close this thing out. Guys, we're at an inflection point. We as insurance agents are at an inflection point right now. Things are changing extremely quickly. I will continue to maintain that while we have all this change, at the end of the day, we still got to all sell insurance. 
But while you're selling insurance and while your people are selling insurance, you better be automating. You better be writing your processes out. You better be willing to get up out of your desk or make a phone call to guys like Chris and Nick Ayers and Bradley Flowers and those kind of guys to learn how you can do things better. Because if you don't, you're still going to be stuck running that old offense that you were running back in the 1980s while everybody else is running the run and shoot or whatever the new offense is, and you're going to be left behind. So get your ass out from behind that desk. Get out in the big bad world and go sell insurance for your family. Automate your processes. Make sure your customer experience is what it should be. Give your customers that wow experience that Chris Green is doing right now. Go make money for your family. Go write good business for the agencies that you represent. Go write good business for the companies that you represent. Bradley Flowers, I love you you too, buddy. Thanks, Chris. Hey, guys, you are are listening to the Insurance Guys podcast, and we're going to see you back here again real soon. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Insurance Guys podcast. If you need to know more about me or you need to get in touch with Scott, you can always reach me at theinsuranceguyonline.com or email me at iprotectins at gmail.com. And if you need to get in touch with Mr. Bradley Flowers, go to bradleyflowersinsurance.com or email him at bradley at sarahlandinsurance.com. Guys, we love you. Thank you so much for listening. We look forward to being with you again real soon on the next episode of the Insurance Guys. Take care.